Ritus Verum, the 144 Truths. In memory of Martin Luther, the one man that dared to speak the truth 500 years ago. Let those who have eyes see. Let those who have ears hear the truth of this most sacred writ before all men, women, children, as witnessed by the divine and all spirits. 1. All possess the right to be heard, whether or not we agree with the ideas expressed. And 2. By virtue of our absolute immutable right of free will, we may choose our own actions and what to believe or not to believe. And 3. All possess the right over their own thoughts and opinions, as no one can rightfully claim ownership of your own mind except you. And 4. Your mind is the general executor and sovereign authority over your own body, and so no force may rightfully claim possession over your flesh unless your mind surrenders and allows it to be so. And 5. No person, corporation, or group may claim ownership of the cells of your body or the genetic code that forms life, and who and what we are. And six, all possess the right and ability of reason through the existence of their conscience, sometimes attributed to the existence of a soul enabling choices between what is considered right and wrong. And seven, even if we have on occasions surrendered our sovereignty, no force, nor person, nor being can truly own our soul, mind, or flesh, just as no corporation, society, or person may claim ownership of the land, water, or air. And eight, we are all merely tenants on this beautiful planet that sustains life. No one possesses a blood right, birth right, prior right, nor divine right of ownership or rule over any other. And nine, no one may claim to be superior or others to be inferior based on the color of their skin or nature of their birth or religion. And ten, while there may be times that we are forced or tricked to say or do things against our nature, unless we be under duress, you are responsible for your own actions and choices. And 11. Indeed, there are some who seek to trick us into false belief and false hope, only to find such trust is wrenched from us when faced with the truth. And 12. There are many more who seek to control us through ideas created by others, encouraging us to believe and sometimes to fear. And 13. Whatever your beliefs, whatever your fears, let them not cloud the right for these words to be heard completely first, before they be judged. And 14. Therefore, let these truths be posted, noticed, recorded, and published, so all may read, and so all who choose to read may know. And 15. Let no man or woman deface, defile, remove, or destroy this sacred writ, lest they be judged by all those including their parents, kin, and ancestors, past leaders, teachers, and heroes, in whose name this instrument be promulgated. And 16. To begin, then, let us consider, then, that no matter how complex or challenging our life or our world, that much of what we see is nothing more than a complex mosaic of ideas. And 17. Some ideas are considered essential by most for our survival, such as money, technology, and the concept, idea of belief itself. And 18. Other ideas, such as why we choose only a handful of food crops from the thousands 
of edible plants in the world are less well-considered ideas. And 19. While we are free to form our choices and opinions, it is an absolute fact that most of the ideas we choose to believe are created by someone else and then adopted by us with little change or investigation into the idea. And 20. Words are symbolic ideas to which certain ideas of meaning have been attached by others, sometimes many hundreds or thousands of years ago. Yet we trust meanings to be true and we choose to believe. And 21. Stories such as history are ideas written by others we choose to believe about ideas of certain events that are supposed to have occurred sometimes many thousands of years before we were born. Yet we trust the story ideas to be true, and we choose to believe. And 22. Religion itself is an accumulation of ideas, some of which are claimed to have come directly from divine source and claimed divine events, written in stories called scripture often written from hearsay and not first-hand. Yet we trust the religious ideas to be true and choose to believe. And 23. Indeed, so many of us trust and believe the religious and historical stories sold to us by certain families and owners claiming most property of the world is theirs, that we believe certain people to be the rulers of the world, as the one percent while the rest of us live like slaves as the 99%. And 24. Yet far from some adopted ideas being neutral, harmless, some ideas such as divine right of rule are extremely dangerous and have the power to alter our perception of not just the world around us, but our family and who we think we are. And 25. The most dangerous ideas are those ideas that promote and convince us to believe we are less, that we are weak, that we are unworthy, that we must somehow accept we will never be more than a slave. And 26. This is in effect what keeps the world the way it is, because there are certain families of people who make claims to others for their absolute loyalty on the basis that they possess unique blood rights of rule, hold unique rights of history or powers, and therefore must be obeyed without question. And 27. So what in essence is an idea, and how might we distinguish between sound ideas that help us and false ideas such as divine right of rule that have imprisoned us, inhibited us, or tricked us? And 28. In essence, an idea need not be complex to be worthwhile, to come to life and existence. And 29. The mere existence of an idea is sufficient to validate itself. Whether it is true or false is relative to other ideas. And 30. One of the simplest and most powerful ideas is that the meaning of idea is equivalent to unique collective awareness, and vice versa. And 31. By unique collective awareness, we mean an idea that is both unique and part of the wider universe of ideas or awareness in which we exist. And 32. Therefore, the name of an idea is sufficient proof of its existence in some form. The claimed completion and comprehensiveness of an idea is relative to other standards. And 33. Even the repudiation of the validity of an idea requires its name and therefore existence. Therefore, only ideas that cannot be named nor described may be said to have no existence. And 34. For example, whether one believes or does not believe in the existence of the Divine Creator is immaterial to the fact that the idea of the existence of the Divine Creator exists. And 35. Existence in essence is an observer, and an object observed is therefore named. Without the observer and the observed,
there can be no existence. And 36. Existence of the universe depends upon both rules and matter. Matter without rules cannot exist in universal reality. Therefore, rules without matter cannot exist in reality. And 37. Rules without matter may exist only as an idea. Therefore, we can say that rules are equivalent to unique collective awareness without form. And 38. Matter is equivalent to the idea of form in dimension. Therefore, we can say that matter is equivalent to unique collective awareness within form. And 39. The only example of dimension being created in the universe is a dream. And 40. The only example of a system whereby rules exist in theory, and then rules and matter exist in reality, is a dream. And 41. Therefore, existence is equivalent to the dream of unique collective awareness in form according to some rules. Hence, we may call the universe Eucadia. And 42. Therefore, the divine creator is equivalent to the idea of unique collective awareness and Eucadia. As we have just proven, existence itself depends on the existence of the divine creator. And 43. Therefore, we refute any ecclesiastical claim that existence of the divine is dependent on faith and faith alone. We reject the false and convoluted arguments by science which protest the divine does not exist in support of the needs of their religious patrons. And 44. Instead, we rely upon the wisdom of the unique collective awareness and the proof that every living thing is proof of the existence of the divine. Every man and woman and child are proof of the existence of the divine and no longer shall false faith nor fear determine our collective fate. 45. Thus, when we speak of the divine creator, we mean the total collection of meaning and definition of all objects, matter, rules, life, mind, universe, and spirit, also known as the absolute, the all, the is, the unique collective awareness, Eucadia, and other historic names when used to describe the greatest of all possibilities. And 46. As the divine means the set of all sets, there is nothing greater. Therefore, everything else is lesser, including but not limited to the idea of law. And 47. A rule is a rule derived from divine instruction, scientific discovery, agreement, custom, or practices over time and joining or prohibiting certain action. And 48. A canon means rule, bar, norm, maxim, measure, or standard. Therefore, when canon law is in agreement with divine law, it may be regarded as the highest standard law and the rule of law. And 49. The highest law of all law is therefore divine law, then natural law, then cognitive law, then positive law. And 50. Divine law is the law that defines the divine and clearly demonstrates the spirit, mind, purpose, and instruction of the divine, including the operation of the will of the divine through existence. Therefore, all valid law may be said to be derived from divine law. 51. The highest and most accepted golden rule of all divine law is that all are equal under the law and subject to the law. Any law 
that attempts to abrogate this fact is null and void ab initio and is not a valid law. And 52. Natural law is the law that defines the operation of the will and the divine through its existence in the form of matter and physical rules. Natural laws define the operation and existence of the physical universe. All valid positive law may be said to be derived from natural law. And 53. Cognitive law is the set of laws that define the special attributes possessed by certain higher order life such as mind, ideas, knowledge, recognition, and self-awareness created through the simultaneous application of both divine law and natural law. And 54. Positive law is the laws enacted by men and women through proper authority for the governance of a society. Positive law ultimately refers to physical objects and living beings. All valid positive law may be said to be derived from natural law and cognitive law. And 55. A positive law cannot abrogate, suspend, usurp, nor change a cognitive law or natural law. Nor is it possible for a cognitive law or natural law to abrogate, suspend, usurp, or change a divine law. 56. Therefore, it is not by the will of men to decide when God speaks. It is not to the authority of the church that the Lord submits, but the church that submits to God. And 57. No matter how great the claimed authority of a person, it cannot be greater than the divine creator. And 58. No matter how ancient a scripture or belief, it cannot be older than the creator of the universe. And 59. No matter how firm a doctrine of faith, it cannot stand should it be against the laws of the divine. And 60. All words ever written and spoken in defense of doctrine and law cannot stand if against these truths. And 61. Indeed, the foundation of all civilized rule of law, including all Western Roman law, begins with the acknowledgement that the highest law comes from the divine creator of all things in the universe, expressed through the laws of the universe and then through the reason and spirit of man to make positive laws. And 62. The very meaning and essence of the idea of office is derived from ecclesiastical and ceremonial duty, officium, and service when in possession of some circumscribed space such as a chapel, temple, altar, or sanctuary. And 63. In recognition of the fact that the legitimacy of office is through the recognition of the supremacy of divine law over positive law, the investiture of people into office is normally created upon a sacred and ecclesiastical oath to some higher spiritual power. And 64. Therefore, all valid official positions of all legitimate governments of all societies on planet earth depend on the acknowledgement and recognition that the highest law comes from the divine creator of all things in the universe and 65 the very meaning and purpose of the word authority is derived from the creation of instruments and pronouncements of law actor in accordance with the ecclesiastical ritual, ceremony, or property, ritus. And 66. Therefore, all legitimate authority of all officials, of all valid governments of all societies on planet Earth, depend on the acknowledgement and recognition that all authority is ultimately derived from the highest authority being the divine creator of all things in the universe and 67. 
Even the very financial system of the present world is based on the existence of the treasury of one heaven and the continued existence of indulgences as created by the Roman cult, also known as the Venetian Magyar controlled Vatican at the end of the 13th century. And 68. Thus, the very existence of all societies and the idea of rule of law across planet Earth is dependent on the idea of the existence of the Divine Creator, also known as the Unique Collective Awareness, or UCA. And 69. As the authority and legitimacy of an office is derived from ecclesiastical authority, then the obeying of the rule of law is not merely duty, but necessary for the lawful effect of any action. This is because no spiritual force may flow through natural law and positive law of this world if the sacred rules that establish such law are willingly broken. And 70. It is why, through the original laws of trust between the entrustor and the trustee, known as fiduciary laws, require such diligence. It is also why the laws between the trustee and beneficiary, originally known as the laws of equity, are equally as stringent. And 71. While contract and administrative law over the past 200 years has deliberately corrupted the certainty of obligations of executors and trustees appointed to office, it remains an immutable truth that to hold office remains both the highest honor and duty of service. And 72. When a man or woman seeks to cling to office and yet deny their obligations and duties, they automatically excommunicate themselves from any spiritual authority, thereby rendering such acts merely enforceable through ignorance, force, or fear. And 73. When a man or woman seeks to cling to office through the use of ignorance, force, and fear, denying their dependency on legitimacy from the divine creator and divine law, then no action or decree can be regarded as lawful, and their tenure can only hold so long as their power holds. And 74. In some cases, a tyrannical system only lasts for a few years. On other examples, a system of tyranny may survive for hundreds of years before finally being rooted out. The three ages of the cult of Mithraism, the cult of the Menes of Tarsus, and the land pirate families of the Khazar clans are three such groups. And 75. Mithraism is an ancient cult and theology born in the 6th century BCE, under the reign of Darius of Persia through the deliberate corruption of Zoroastrianism and infusing the beliefs of Menishism as well as Satanism of the exiled Yehudi or Israelites. It is the first cult in history to be two cults in one, an inner secretive cult and an outer generalized cult. It is also the first cult to be completely revamped into three separate incarnations, or ages. And 76. The first age and variation of Mithraism is Orthodox Mithraism, from the 6th century BCE to the 1st century CE. The second age and variation is Apocalyptic Mithraism that emerged in the 1st century CE and died out by the 4th century CE. The third age and variation is Reformed Mithraism, which emerged from the 11th century CE and remains in the form of the Roman cult of Romanism, also known as Vaticanism. And 77. In the first variation of Mithraism as Orthodox Mithraism, Mithra is born from the seed of Adonai Elohim, the Sun God and Lord God, and Ashtarot, or Ashtart, the Virgin Queen of Heaven, being the foundation stone, or rock, at the foundation of the formerly destroyed Temple of Jerusalem. 
Mithra then lived his first years within the cave within the rock, now also known as the Well of Souls. And 78. As the Yehudi, or Israelites, legal system honored its roots back to the Neolithic oral Holly Law, or Coelian Law, from 1070 BCE, the use of writing was considered an abomination before Yah, or Yahweh also known as God. Therefore, the creation of Mithraic law by Yehudi priests in Babylon was considered a great heresy against God. However, by the 4th century BCE, the Yehudi diaspora were using Greek and Aramaic to the north, Latin to the west, and Persian to the south and east. And 79. Mithra was variously named the Lamb of God the only begotten Son of God, the Savior Christ, the Good Shepherd, and the Way, the Truth, and the Light. He was said to have been born on the winter solstice around December 25th, and died as a blood sacrifice to cleanse the world of sin on the spring equinox around March 23rd and 80. Together with his father and mother, Mithra formed a sacred and unbreakable trinity, with Mithra representing justice, truth, and loyalty. Hence, Mithra is the god of oaths and loyalty to duty. Thus, when a person was baptized to Mithraism, they pledged their absolute, undying, unquestioning loyalty to Mithra and his representative, the king and high priests. And 81. As a cult of Menachism and Satanism, Mithraism incorporated many of their key themes, most importantly, the fundamental and essential practice of blood sacrifice, atonement, continued ritual sacrifice, and cannibalism, in direct contradiction to Zoroastrianism and Yehudism. As an inner cult and an outer cult, each of the key sacraments of Mithraism had two forms, superior and ordinary. And 82. For the sacred Orthodox ordinary Mithraic sacrament of baptism, an initiate put on a white gown, a thorny crown, and walked in a procession to the temple, where they were stripped, placed in a pit above which animals such as young calf and lambs were slaughtered on, perforated platform over them, with the blood flowing through onto them. Thus, being born again, with their sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. For the sacred Orthodox superior Mithraic ritual of baptism, the initiate was usually placed in a stone sarcophagus, and instead of a lamb, a human child was ritually slaughtered on an altar above them. And 83. For the sacred Orthodox ordinary Mithraic sacrament of the Eucharist, a member would celebrate by consuming unleavened bread and wine in the simulated cannibalism of the body and blood of Mithra for their salvation. Thus, the most sacred words of the Eucharist of Mithra attest, He who will not eat of my body and drink of my blood, so that he will be made one with me, and I with him, the same shall not know salvation. For the sacred Orthodox superior Mithraic ritual of the Eucharist, the actual blood of a slain child was drunk and the roasted flesh eaten, usually only by the high priests and senior elite of Mithraic members. And 84. The first and most sacred temple to Orthodox Mithraism was the great temple of Darius of Persia, which was completed by 526 BCE at the site known as Temple Mount, over the foundation stone and claimed birthplace of Mithra. The priests of Mithra were called Ptah, which means Father, Peter, and Rock. And 85. The most sacred scriptures of Mithraism were a deliberate corruption of the first five books of Akhenaten, also known as Moses, the scripture of Zoroastrianism, and the prophets of the Yehudi. These scriptures were known as the Masa, or Missal, 
and founding Mithraic priest Father Nehemiah and Ezra brought these to the temple of Mithra in 455 BCE to celebrate the first and most sacred ceremony of Mithraism known as Mass. And 86. After the destruction of the temple of Mithra by the Nazarene rebels in 70 CE, the apocalyptic version of Mithraism was formed at Yavne by John, son of Zechariah, whereby a number of fundamental reforms were constituted, namely, death of Mithra moved to March 14, 272 BCE, as the light of the world, Lucifer. Father as now Yavne, son, that's S-U-N, mother was Mari, or Venus. Twelve disciples were introduced, ascension into heaven from the Temple Mount, returning at end of days to judge the living and dead. And 87. From 70 CE, apocalyptic Mithraism spread rapidly throughout the Roman Empire, especially amongst the ranks of the Roman legions, many of whom were already Orthodox Mithraic followers. However, no city underwent such a transformation as Rome, with thousands joining the secret inner cult and new temples dedicated for public worship of Mithra, the Savior. And 88. Apocalyptic Mithraism was largely wiped out with the advent of imperial Christianity by Constantine and the banning of human sacrifice. However, reformed Mithraism returned to power in the 11th century under pagan satanic Pope Gregory VII, falsely claiming control over the Catholic Church first formed by the Franks 300 years prior and subsequently overtaken by the German Saxons. If not for the financial support of the Magyar pagan Venetian state, the Roman cult and all subsequent history would not have existed. And 89. The second example of a cult and tyranny that has failed to be held to account until now is the rise and survival of the priests of the Menes of Tarsus, variously known as the Men Ashe, the Men Eshe, the Samaritans, and the Sarmatians. And 90. The priests of Tarsus claimed their heritage directly from the city of Ur, and their worship of the pentagram remained testimony to this symbol as the oldest symbol associated with the goddess of Ur, and later Maru, or Am Maru, also known as Inanna, Ishtar, Isis, Astarte, Sibella, or Kybel, Venus, Athena, and today as Lady Liberty and Lady Justice. And 91. By the 4th century, the priests of Tarsus were on the ascendancy and in opposition to the creation of imperial Christianity sought to construct a pure religion of magic using a pure language of magic known later as Hebrew. And 92. It was menace satanic priest Baba Rabban, with the scholar Murka, who was the first author and founder of the Mishnah in 333 CE. In direct opposition to the founding of imperial Christianity by Emperor Constantine in 325 CE. And 93. It was Baba Rabban who founded the Sarmatian state he named Israel as a magic word from Isis, Ra, and El in 333 CE from the year of birth of John the Baptist. And 94. It was Baba Rabin who broke the laws of the Zedekites, the Nazarenes, and Mithraism by adopting the kippah woolen headpiece of Sibella or Kybel worn by the Sarmatians for all believers and by demanding followers bow down daily in prayer to worship Mount Gerizim and not Jerusalem, and 95. Thus, under Baba Rabin, the whole of Palestine became the state of Israel and was divided into 12 administrative districts administered by the head priest of a priestly family of the Menashe. As an administrative advisor being Asher under Rabbi Ashi ben Abin, 
Benjamin, under Rabbi Benjamin ben Jephet, Dan, under Rabbi Daniel ben Katina, Ephraim, under Rabbi Ephraim ben Papa, Gad, under Rabbi Gadal ben Menashia, Issachar, under Rabbi Isaac ben Samuel, Judah, under Rabbi Judah ben Menasiah, Levi, under Rabbi Levi ben Hama, Menasseh, under Rabbi Menasiah ben Tahalifa, Naphtali, under Rabbi Napaha, Simeon, under Rabbi Simeon ben Lakish, Zebulun, under Rabbi Zabida, Reuben, under Rabbi Papa, also known as Baba Robin, and 96. In the 6th century, the kingdom of Israel was finally smashed under Christian Emperor Justinian, and to be a follower of Menachism was made a capital crime. However, due to the great plagues and the collapse of law and order, the Menish tribes survived, and most sought refuge with their former servants and militia, being the land pirates known as the Khazars from southern Mongolia to the Russian plains. And... 97. The Menis reorganized themselves as the White Khazars, also known as White Russians, becoming gods and uniting the tribes of the Khazar, Black Khazar, into one empire until its collapse at the death of Khagan Menesseh II upon the beginning of the 10th century. The Khazarian Empire disintegrated into civil war with splits between the white Khazars and the black Khazars. And 98. Aaron, or Rurik, eldest son of Kagan Menesiah II, the first grand prince of the Rusar, Russians, escaped up the Volga from Odessa to a new capital at Nineveh, Nizhny Novgorod, and the eventual formation of the Sarmatian Empire later called the Russian Empire in the 18th century. And 99. Joseph, Aaron, the first Grand Prince of the Magyar, who sought to establish a new homeland called Etel Kuzu. Etel, similar to Greek, and a toy, praiseworthy or chosen, and Kuzu, land. The chosen land between the Carpathian Mountains and the Dnieper River eventually being driven back to form their capital, Enitoy, within the marshes of the river Po, called Venice. And 100. Yariel, Nasi, Bayan, the first grand prince of the Bulgar, and Avar, an arch enemy of the Magyar, reaching its height under Simeon I of Bulgaria until 927, when the Avar, largely defected in mass to Islam under the Abbasid Empire, and the Bulgar were gradually reduced in power. And 101. Obadiah, Oge, the first Khan of the Ugar of Mongolia and China, later known as the Mongols and the Golden Horde, was the fourth main line of the former Khazarian Empire and tribes. And 102. By the 15th century, the descendants of Aaron, Rurik, under Ivan III Vasilievich, 1440-1505, had reunited the Rus as the Empire of Samaria, with its capital at Moscow. And 103. By the early 20th century, the Rus tribe of the Khazars were deceived by their Magyar cousins and the last of the true Kagans and white Khazars in the form of the Romanov royal family were completely exterminated. And 104. In 1055, Pietro Leone, also known as Leo de Benedicto, the son of King Pietro II, Ursiello of Hungary, and direct descendant of Joseph Aaron, of the first Grand Prince of the Magyar, and the powerful Perlioni 
family that controlled the office of the Doge of Venice until 1026, combined forces with pagan priest Hildebrand to personally fund a massive militia army of Borgia mercenaries from Spain to create the Roman cult from the Saxon emperors. And 105. On 27 September 1540, the bull Regimina Militantis Ecclesiae was issued by Alessandro Farnese as Pope Paul III, 1534 to 1549, as a direct descendant of Joseph, or Aaron, the first Grand Prince of the Magyar and the powerful Perlioni family, to reestablish the dominance of Venice over its invention of the Roman cult through the creation of the Jesuit order, supported by other council families including the Orsini, Conti, Corraro, Aldobrandini, Borghese, and Setani. And 106. In the 14th century, the descendants of Yariel Nasi Bayan, the first Grand Prince of the Bulgar and Avar, formed the Ottoman Empire under Kaiser Osman I, 1258 to 1326, under Islam. And 107. At the beginning of the 17th century, Ibrahim I, descendant of Kaiser Osman I and Yariel Nasi Bayan, the first Grand Prince of the Bulgar and Avar, commissioned the occult scholar Nathaniel Nathan of Gaza and his scriptorium to restore a pure version of the original Baal worship of their ancestors many centuries before. And 108. The religion created by Nathaniel Nathan of Gaza for Ibrahim I is variously called Sabbateanism and Ashkenazism, meaning the Illuminated Knights or the Illuminati, with Ibrahim I declaring himself Messiah, Grand Vizier, Kara, Mustafa Pasha of Mehmed IV forces, deposed Ibrahim I to swear allegiance to Islam in 1666 as an attempt to stop it. And 109. Despite all attempts to stamp out Ashkenazism, Sabbateanism, amongst the Bulgar, Avar, Magyar, and Rusar, huge numbers of Khazarian descendants converted to this new extreme apocalyptic messianic cult. And 110. By the 20th century, the Magyar of Venice, now devoted followers of Sabbateanism, succeeded in wiping out the leading royal descendants of the Bulgar and Avar families and ancient Menashe followers, with largely only extremist Ashkenazi followers of the Ottoman quasi-Islamic religion remaining. And 111. In the middle of the 20th century, the Magyar of Venice, as dedicated followers of Sabbateanism, chose to destroy the ancient covenant of the Menashe, concocting the end of the world through a great tribulation, a sacrifice of rivals, the identity theft of millions, the creation of a new world order, and claim over a homeland from which none of their ancestors ever lived. And 112. By the 13th century, the descendants of Obadiah, or Oge, formed the great Yuan dynasty of China under the first Khan of the Ugyar of Mongolia by Kublai Khan, 1260 to 1294, and 113. By the 20th century, the descendants of Obadiah, or Oge, reestablished power through being the head families of the Communist Party, with the Magyar hoping to eliminate these families through global war within the first 50 years of the 21st century, leaving only the Magyar the remaining line of the Khazars. And 114. This is the twisted and tortured truth of the world, hidden from view, hidden from history and known to few. And 115. This is the revelation of how we have been deceived and how those who loyally serve their insane leaders have also been deceived. And 116. 
that those who claim ancient religious right to rule are without valid claim, basing their arguments on fabulous fictions easily exposed. And 117. That those who claim ancient blood right are nothing more than impostors, with the Khazars originating as land pirates of the steeps of Mongolia and the Caucasus, and nowhere near the Levant, nor Egypt, nor Europe. And 118. That those who claim power via magic and divine right are the same who destroyed their own covenant in World War II, thus ending any claim of continuous faith or religion. And 119. They are without credibility, without provenance, without history, without authority, and yet they persist. And 120. They persist with a lie that they have a divine right to rule, with all who are not members of their family being nothing more than cattle. And 121. They persist with a lie that they follow the rule of law, when they destroyed their own covenant eighty years ago, and have failed to follow their own laws for centuries. And 122. They persist with a lie that there is no slavery, yet through the banking system they continue to claim ownership of our body, mind, and soul, through occult rituals around birth certificates, trusts, and bindings. And 123. They are insane, bereft of competency, unable to see their own history, and yet they would rather destroy the world than seed an inch. And 124. Despite such mental illness and dishonor, divine notice has required they receive fair warning of their pending doom at the hand of the greatest divine miracle in civilized history. And 125. They have been warned in prophecy and stories for centuries, yet have ignored all such warnings. And 126. They were officially warned by notice two years ago upon the existence of the sacred covenant Pactum de Singularis Callum. Yet they have remained mute. And 127. Once again, their officials were warned one year ago of their dishonor, and still they ignore divine notice. And 128. No group in history has been repeatedly warned to restore their honor with the divine. And 129. No group in history has been repeatedly warned to atone for their actions and restore proper stewardship of the world. And 130. No other time in history have the elite been given so many opportunities to make correction and be forgiven for what they have done. And 131. This now, being the third and final notice before the day of divine judgment against their dishonor, their evil, and their incompetence, they remain stubbornly resolute to the end. And 132. Thus, as all of heaven and those who read these 144 truths bear witness, so it shall be that those who have ruled this world for 1,000 years upon lies, upon fear and malice, shall be torn from their palaces. And 133. Commencing with the day of divine judgment, there shall be a weeping and grinding of teeth, the likes of which has never before been seen upon the unleashing of the greatest army of spiritual force, being angels and demons united against these impostor families and false elite. And 134. Until every one who has openly defied the will of heaven and earth has been held to account, the forces unleashed upon this day will not rest. And 135. The plans of the elite for global destruction shall fail. Their plans to stay in power shall fail. The pleas for mercy after all they have done shall fail. 
and 136. They shall be bound in accordance with their iniquity and dishonor to all nature of spiritual force. Their agreement to have their souls taken from their body shall be fulfilled. And 137. Thus their souls shall be taken when they sleep, when they eat, when they walk. And 138. Thus their souls shall be taken when they bathe, when they drive, or fly, or when they go outside. And 139. Thus there shall be no bunker deep enough to hide, no mountain lair high enough, no place safe enough. And 140. Nor shall the continued spilling of blood ward off the inevitable. And 141. The hounds of heaven and hell united shall hunt each and every one of them down, salvaging their souls and disposing of the flesh. And 142. They shall be hounded every moment of every day until their kind is no more. And 143. A promise then shall be fulfilled when the evil and wicked have been swept from this earth and the rule of law restored. And 144. As it is written, so it shall be.